full body training is the way to go. I mean that from both a scientific and practical perspective. And today I'm going to teach you how to create your own custom science-based full body workout and also why you absolutely should. Let's get into it. We're gonna break this down into a few categories that will get you the majority of the gains you want. We're gonna call these movement patterns. Now you might have heard of some of these patterns. They are usually categorized as upper push, upper pull, lower push, lower pull. But in my opinion, these leave a bit too much left out. So I'm going to use a couple of these patterns along with a few anatomical functions. Now first, we've got horizontal push. This will take care of your front delts, pecs, and triceps. Next, we've got upper body pull. Now, I'd recommend going with a vertical pull as the range of motion at the shoulder joint is longer and you get more bicep activity, but a horizontal pull works just as fine. The pull category will train your lats, mid traps, rear delts, and biceps. Lower push is the next one. Here you'll be hitting your quads and glutes. We're going to combine two things next, two categories, I should say, hinging and knee flexion. Hinging will take care of your hamstrings, lower back and glutes. Knee flexion, just the hamstrings. Now you can choose one of these categories or the other. Primary thing we're trying to hit here is hamstrings. Then we've got shoulder abduction, AKA a lateral raise. This is one of the aforementioned holes in only using the standard movement patterns. The side delt contributes minimally to things like shoulder pressing, and we've already trained the front delts and rear delts with our upper body pressing and pulling, so that just leaves the side shoulder, which we need to train directly. Similar thing with our final category, ankle extension. The calves are minimally involved in any of the other categories, unless you're one of the lucky few who have developed calves simply from running or walking. I wish I was you. If you're not one of those people like me, you need to train them directly. The abs and obliques are heavily active in dozens of different movements and so they don't really need direct training. Now here are the set and rep recommendations for each of these categories as well. I'm basing this on the fiber typing of the muscles involved. You can also feel free to do this style of workout as many times per week as you'd like. I would create two, maybe three different workouts and do them in succession. Now here's an example if say you were planning on lifting four times a week. You can make two workouts, you call them workout A and B. You can do these Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday. Now that we've gone through the how of creating a science-based full body program, this is where we get to the why. Yes, I do think full body training is the best. That is not to say that bodybuilding splits don't work or the push-pull leg split doesn't work, or that power building doesn't work. They all do work, as evidenced by all the jacked people who use those splits and routines. But again, I'd argue full body works best. First, we know that doing more than three sets per workout for a given body part doesn't give you very much additional growth. The largest amount of growth happens within that first two to three sets. After doing more than three sets, we don't see much additional growth, but we will induce much greater fatigue in the nervous system and the joints. Not enough benefit for the cost, basically. But we also know that the more volume a muscle receives over the course of a week or month, the more growth it will see. So how do we rectify this? If doing more volume means more growth, but doing more volume within a single session doesn't work well, Obviously, we should do less volume per workout per muscle and more sessions per week for said muscle. This is the key reason I argue full body training is best, although I will say I don't really like full body training as a term. There will likely be some gaps somewhere. You're not gonna train everything unless you wanna spend two, two and a half, three hours in the gym. I work out for a living and even I don't wanna spend that much time in the gym. But there's also a practical reason behind training this way. One big problem you run into with bodybuilding splits is when life happens. You have back day on Tuesday, but on this particular Tuesday, your boss asks you to stay late or you have a family emergency. For one reason or another, you can't make it to the gym. 
So what do you do without throwing off your entire split? If you're training the majority of your muscles in each session, you remove the need to train specific body parts on specific days. You've got workout B planned for Tuesday. You can't make it to the gym. No biggie, just move it to the next day. And you also may be wondering about rest days and how that factors into this. Do you need to rest a muscle to see growth? Absolutely. But muscles generally recover within 72 hours, even for beginners. You also have to consider that with this style of program, you're doing way less volume per session, meaning you won't need as much rest. When you do the typical kind of chest day and you do 15 to 20 sets for your chest in that one session, you will not see much additional growth after your first three or four sets. So continuing on, you're ultimately only gonna further fatigue your nervous system and your joints, which is why taking more than that three days that it takes to rest your muscles might be a good idea if you're doing a standard bodybuilding split and doing tons of volume per session. So with the less volume um, done on subsequent days or successive days, yeah, I'll put it like that. You can feel free to train a muscle on back-to-back -back days uh, because the amount of volume is so much smaller. You should have no problem recovering. If you do start to notice that your strength numbers are not going up, that means that you probably are not recovering properly. Also could mean something to do with your sleep or food, but if those two things are mostly in order, then it's probably you're not recovering adequately enough. So if that's the case, take an additional day off in between. And that's all I got to say about that. Thank you for listening, folks. I'm Coach Ty with Muscle Wiki. Please like, comment, subscribe, and share. Look us up on MuscleWiki.com. Is that all I have to say? That's all I have to say. I will see you with the next one. Deuces. Deuces.